In this video, we're going to talk about directional derivatives and the gradient. So you've learned about partial derivatives, and partial derivatives tell us a lot about rate of change of a function, but they don't really answer some que important questions. And so that's where directional derivatives are going to come in. So for a surface in three dimensions, and this is a surface of um, depending on x and y, so if we're at a point on this surface, we'll just call it the point P. Now the partial derivative at this point will tell us, well the two partial derivatives will tell us the rate of change in the direction parallel to x, the x-axis, and then the partial other partial derivative will tell us the rate of change um, parallel to the y-axis. So the partial derivative with respect to x would be the rate of change in the direction parallel to the x-axis and same thing for the partial derivative um, with respect to y. But what if I want to go another direction? So what if I'm interested in going any of the infinite other directions that I can at this point? What's the rate of change there? And so that's what the directional derivative is about. So for our definition, first we have to define our function. We know that f is a function and we just want to say that f is differentiable differentiable at the point we're going to say it's called AB so differentiable at the point AB and then also we want to define U as this unit vector in the XY plane so U is equal to the vector U1, U2 and this is our unit vector in the XY plane okay so with this defined we can now explain the directional derivative. Directional derivative of f, and we're going to do this at a point, so directional derivative of f at a, b, and then we have to have a direction. So directional derivative of f at the point a, b in the direction of u is defined as the following. We have this vector um, comprised of the partial derivative. So partial derivative of f with respect to x at the point a, b, comma partial derivative of y with respect to um, sorry of f with respect to y at a b and then we're going to take the dot product of this and our vector u u1 u2 so this is our directional derivative all right so we want to compute the directional derivative of f at the point 2 negative 2 in the direction of u Okay. But first, we need to verify that u is in fact a unit vector. So verify that the magnitude of u is 1. Okay. So real quick, square root of 1 over, well square root of this um, 1 over square root 5 squared plus 2 over square root 5 squared, we're just going to get 1 over 5 plus 4 over 5, so this is in fact 1. So now we can continue. And we want, again, the directional derivative of f at our point 2, negative 2 in the direction of u. And so this is going to be the vector comprised of the partial derivative first with respect to x. So if I take the derivative of f right here with respect to x, now I'm going to rewrite this function with a rational exponent just to make it a little easier to take the derivative. So this is the same thing as a one-half power, our square root. So this is going to be one-half 4 minus x squared minus 2y and now derivative of, oh, and then to the um, negative one-half power using the power rule for the derivative times the derivative of the inside. We have to do the chain rule here. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x, so the derivative of the inside is going to be negative 2x. Okay. Comma, let's look at the um, partial derivative <coughs> with respect to y. So partial derivative of this with respect to y is going to be 1 half 4 minus x squared minus 2y to the 1 half, negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inside with respect to y, so that's going to be times negative 2. Okay, and now we still have to dot this with u. So 1 over square root 5, 2 over square root 5. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify what we got going on here. So the rest is just a matter of taking this dot product and simplifying. Okay, so we have the first <coughs> component here of our um, first vector 
we have negative 2x times a 1 half, so that's going to give us a negative x, and now in our denominator, because this quantity has a negative 1 half power, this is going to go down to the denominator. I'm going to put it back in radical form. Okay, and then for this next component, <clears throat> negative 2 times the 1 half is going to give us a negative 1 in our numerator, and then our denominator is going to be the same thing as the other one. Okay, and then we're going to take the dot product of this with our unit vector. All right, so the last thing is just this dot product. So remember that um, anytime you take a or do the dot product, the answer is a scalar. So we, we will not have a vector at the end here, we're going to have a scalar. So negative um, x, this quantity here over our um, square root times 1 half, or I'm sorry, 1 over square root 5 is just going to give us negative um, x <coughs> over square root 5 times square root 4 minus x squared minus 2y. And then technically plus, but this is going to turn negative here, plus negative 1 times 2 over square root 5 <coughs> times this other radical. And now, because we have the same denominator, we can go ahead and combine our numerators. So we have negative x minus 2 all over our square root 5 times our other square root. Now you can combine the radicals here because it's a product of the these two radicals. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just start evaluating at um, our point because we had a point given to negative 2. So now let's evaluate this um, quantity at that point. So negative x is, would be negative 2 minus 2 over square root 5 times 4 minus 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2. Okay. So then our numerator is going to end up being negative 4. We get a square root 5 here. And then all of this, let's see what it becomes. Uh, we get uh, 4 minus 4, there's 0. And then this is a positive 4, so times uh, square root 4 here. So this ends up simplifying as negative 2 over square root 5. So this is the result of our directional derivative. So this is the rate of change of our function f at the point 2, negative 2 in the direction of u. Okay, so now we want to look at the gradient. So the vector part of the directional derivative, it has a specific name and it's the gradient and it's actually um, pretty important in a lot of calculations that you're going to do. So the direction, the gradient of f, so we use a symbol, this is the del operator symbol, you can call it nabla. So our gradient of f of at x, y is going to be the partial derivative that we had in the um, directional derivative definition. So partial derivative of f with respect to x at x, y, comma, partial derivative of y, or f uh, with respect to y at x, y. Okay, so this specifically is called the gradient. And we can rewrite this in a different form. So partial derivative of f with respect to x in our y direction, um, our i direction, plus partial derivative of f with respect to y in our j direction. Okay. So what this does to our directional derivative definition is we can now just rewrite it in terms of the gradient. So the directional derivative of f at the point a, b in the direction of u is equal to the gradient of f at a, b dotted with our unit vector u. We're going to compute the gradient and then evaluate it at the point p. So the gradient of f is the partial derivative with respect to x and then y. So we have, first of all, the derivative of e to some power is just going to be e to that power, and then times the derivative of the power. So the derivative of the power with respect to x is going to be negative 2x. Okay. And then we're going to do, so this is, let me change this. It's not a dot product, it's a times here, so let me make that smaller. Same thing with respect to y, so e to the negative x squared minus 2y squared times the derivative of this power with respect to y, and we're going to end up getting a negative 4 um, y. Okay. Alright, so let's simplify this and then we'll evaluate it at the point negative 1, 2. So all we can really do here, there's not much to simplify. 
we can um, factor out what they share, which is actually um, this e to the power, and then they also share negative 2. But let's go ahead and just leave that in there. So we have negative 2x e to the negative x squared minus 2y squared, and then negative 4y e to the negative x squared minus 2y squared. Okay, so this is our gradient. And let's go ahead and just plug in negative 1 and 2. Okay, so when we evaluate the gradient at the point, 2, uh, actually we picked negative 1, 2, we're going to get negative 2 times negative 1, e to the negative, this is x, so um, negative 1 squared minus 2, and then y was 2, so 2 squared. Okay, same thing for the y component over here. We have negative 4 times our y value, e to the negative, negative 1 squared, minus 2 times 2 squared. Okay. All right, now we just need to simplify, and then that's it for this one. So we have 2 e, and then if you simplify this um, power up here, we end up getting negative 9, and then over here, this is negative 8 e, and then our power is the same. Okay. So this would be our gradient evaluated at that point. All right. Now the gradient in three dimensions, it's the same idea, just taking the partial derivatives, and now because if we're moving into three dimensions, you just introduce z. So we'll just mention this quickly. So in 3D, the gradient of f, now it's a function of x, y, and z, is going to be the um, partial derivative of our function f with respect to x, i plus the partial derivative with respect to y, j, plus the partial derivative with respect to z, k. So that's just in three dimensions. All right, so now I want to talk about directions of change that we're going to use this, now that we know the gradient, we're going to use the idea of it um, for this. So we're assuming that our function f is differentiable at some point a, b, and we also just need to assume that the gradient of f of, um, at a, b is not zero, okay? So if this is true, then we have three uh, facts we can look at. So the maximum or max rate of change, or not even just change, we're going to go with increase. So the maximum rate of increase, and this is going to be of our function f, at the point AB, so ma max rate of increase at AB, it's going to be in the direction of the gradient. So this is occurs in the direction of our gradient at that point. Okay? So that's the max rate of increase. Now the max rate of decrease, you can maybe guess what it would be. The max rate of decrease, same thing at the point AB, is going to occur at the negative of the gradient. So in the direction negative of, negative of our gradient. In the direction of negative of the gradient at that point. Okay, so that's the max rate of decrease. And then the third fact here is that the directional derivative, directional <coughs> derivative is equal to zero, derivative equals zero in any direction that's orthogonal to our gradient. So any, in any direction, orthogonal to the gradient. So um, to gradient of f at a point a, b. Okay. So this last fact, the directional derivative is zero um, in any direction orthogonal to our gradient. This is going to lead to um, the last theorem that I want to talk about here, and it's the, it has to do with the gradient and level curves. Okay, so the theorem that I want to talk about, the, oh, lastly, is a, um, relating the gradient to the level curves, and what it says is that the line tangent to the level curve of f at a, b is, and this is the interesting part, is orthogonal, orthogonal to the gradient. 
and we just have to um, mention here like our fine print that the gradient this is when um, the gradient is not equal to zero okay so if we have a level curve of our function f of our surface so let's see um, we're in the xy plane here so our level curve it could look maybe we'll do it like this so this is our level curve of f so remember the level curves are when z is constant so we have some point on this curve. Now a line tangent to this, so let's say this is our tangent line at this curve. Right? What this is, theorem states is that for any line tangent to our curve at a point then it's orthogonal to the gradient. So that would mean that this right here would be the gradient at that point. Okay, and you would, could do this for any of the lines tangent, for any of the points in their tangent lines on this curve. They would be orthogonal to the gradient. So this is actually a useful theorem that you may um, end up using when you get to multivariable 2 calculus.